every once in a while, a book will cross your path that will make you reevaluate, take a closer look at who you really are. How would you react to a desperate state of affairs? So much science fiction is designed to transport us away from our mundane lives into the future, into space, into a story that will never happen to us. In 1956, John Christopher wrote a book that now feels like a prediction. A virus pops up in China and devastates the rice crops. That's terrible for the Chinese, but that's on the other side of the world, right? The Death of Grass is one of the most disturbing books that I've ever read. It dares to go to that uncomfortable place, but first it sets a trap. It convinced me that this catastrophe would be cosy. Alongside the news reports of faraway famine and anarchy, John Christopher paints a picture of an idyllic middle-class English summer. I thought that this would be a story about privilege and human decency, a family huddling together while the storm passes. But chapter by chapter, layer by layer, we are exposed to the harsh realities of survival and the frightening speed at which law and order can unravel. It's all about the tone, the perspective and the timing. For the first 50 pages, we see healthy debate and some optimism among the protagonists. Don't panic, our scientists will have a cure for the virus soon. This is Great Britain. There is definitely a palpable sense of superiority over the rest of the world. They made a mess of things. And just like that, the virus mutates. All grasses are affected. A global famine is on the horizon. Oh, I get it now. This is the 1950s. We emerged from the war victorious. So now we're going to take on nature and animal instinct and come out the other side stronger than ever. No. The first kick in the head is the reaction from the British government. I'm still convinced that this is a story about pure survival, which it is, but survival at what cost? The plan, the secret plan, is to drop nuclear bombs on the major cities and drastically reduce the population, leaving enough resources for those that do survive. This isn't totally out of character for the book. This is a story about really bad things happening to millions of people after all. But just like the virus itself, it feels more powerful when it's happening on home soil. But even now, I'm just taking this as a catalyst. This will push our characters who happen to be privy to this information out into the countryside, bound for the safety of the family farm. Now the death of grass transforms. There's no mass panic on the page. The police roadblocks are civilized for our own protection. And so far, all the horror is just a projection of what could happen. But the bombs are coming and it's just a matter of time before people start to act irrationally and desperately. And our characters understand this. The us or them mentality kicks in very quickly. So the ball is in John Christopher's court. What side of humanity does he want to show us? Novels like this are usually about hope. They're a beacon of light. It's the end of the world, but God damn it, we still have standards. I bloody love the end of the world. That was my next shock. The enthusiasm for normal people to retreat to it's us or them. We are hungry, therefore, we have to kill the people that have the food. Strangers turn into savage rapists the moment the opportunity arises, suggesting that many members of the public are capable of such barbarism. As the reader, I felt lonely. I'm sympathetic. I understand that this situation is extreme, but wow, you got comfortable with death in a hurry. And I hate to say it, but it felt very realistic. And just in case you didn't feel uncomfortable enough, 
There's a character traveling with the family. He's the owner of a gun shop. He's a valued member of the party. They probably won't reach the farm without him. He commits the most disgusting acts. He takes advantage of a teenage girl after they kill her parents. He claims her as his mate, his property. Is that beyond us and them? Is that turning a blind eye to abuse to increase your chances of survival? Who is us? Who is them? If you reach your goal and survive, would it be at the expense of selling your soul? How much sacrifice is too much to bear? The best science fiction makes us feel something, either because our minds are expanded, pushing against the inside of our skulls, or we can picture ourselves in the story. I think the crux of The Death of Grass is to expose the comfortable world to a believable horror and ask the reader those difficult questions. It feels weird to say something like this on camera, but I think most people when push comes to shove, would eliminate a threat to protect their family. Eliminate a threat. I'm trying not to use the words kill or murder. That's the easy part. That's the road. Classic us or them self-defense. You know that if you don't take action, it's game over. This book presents the same dilemma, but all the adrenaline is sucked out and it's wrapped up in a morally grey concept. If you don't kill the innocent policeman, you're not getting through the roadblock. You will die. If you don't kill the farmer and his wife, you and your family will starve. You're forced to calculate and make horrific decisions. It even tackles the same moral predicament from a political perspective. The government are willing to kill hundreds of thousands maybe millions of innocent people to save some people for the future. It's just a calculation. It's us or them. Wow. I suspect some readers will find this gratuitous, but I think it illustrates how fragile society can be. Of course, the vast majority of people are decent folk, but what would you do? Is this a story about hope? I don't think so. There is a destination and they hope to get there in one piece, but the prevailing feeling is one of horror and desperate survival. The future is grim, whatever happens, and you should all read it.